This is video six of the knitted sloth knitted long. We have finished the body. I've got my live stitches here at the top of the neck. And uh, for those of you that just finished up video five, I realize I probably wasn't real clear um, how this last couple of rows and so I real quick before I start the head I want to go back and I've written my note down here that um, on row 71 is where we knitted in the arms that I showed on the video and then the next after those are knitted on uh, the next row would be 72 and you're going to knit row 72 as written in the pattern book then row 73 is a knit row. 74 work as row 76 in the pattern. And that's where I ended is on row 76. And we're now ready to do the head. And then the head will actually get attached here on these live stitches. So I uh, cut my yarn. I left myself a, a big piece length of yarn uh, if I need some extra yarn for anything I have it there. So we're, we're done with the body. We're going to set it aside and we're going to actually start the head. And uh, so I have my same needles I've been working on the body. Uh, I have a little bit of yarn here, but I actually am going to, I might run out. So I'm going to go over here to my larger quantity of yarn and we're going to cast on nine stitches. I'll get us started here and going to do the first row and uh, then uh, we'll talk a little bit more about the head. This is my typical cast on, whether you uh, knit it on or whether you long tail, doesn't make a difference on this. I just want to remind us not to knit too tight or cast on too tight. Um, I think sometimes when we are working, or for me anyhow, when I'm working in a little space, I tend to get my knitting sometimes a little too tight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need one more. And when it gets too tight in these little little sections that we're working on, it just kind of makes the whole process just a little more difficult. So our first row is a knit or, or a purl row, excuse me. So I'm just going to purl across there. And uh, these first few rows are really pretty easy because we've all learned well by now how to make one. So I'm not going to sit and uh, knit every row with you, um, but I will uh, knit off camera up through, let's see, up through row 14 and then 15 through 20 is just stocking knit stitch and then that's where I will come back on video is at row 21 and I will do um, a number of rows there with you. That's where we introduce another color of yarn uh, working with several at the same time. So that is our row two. And then so row, um, or excuse me, row one, that was the purl row. So row two starts the knit one, make one, and that you're going to repeat the knit one, make one, and then um, it goes just that whole process, which I think is very self-explanatory, like I said. So, so I'm going to actually go off camera now and knit up through that row 20 uh, and come back on at row 21. That should be pretty self-explanatory, I believe. I have knitted now up through row 20 and I'm just getting ready to do row 21. Uh, because I'm using uh, shorter double-pointed needles, I've 
got my stitches on three needles. If you're working on a circular needle, you would not need to do this, but um, I decided just to continue to use the flexi flips for this. So we're going to look closely at the pattern because row 21 says this is a pearl row, so I want to get my pearls row side facing me and we're going to look at that row. Um, it starts out with A and what I've done to help myself and I would just uh, suggest that you do something. It doesn't have to be what I've done here, but I needed something to remind me which yarn is A, B, C, and D, because it's critical that we get those used in the correct order. So we're going to start out with A, and A is our pale, that's the body color, so it's my light or my light tan color. The next yarn we're going to go to is C and C happens to be this a um, little bit darker brown and we're only going to do two stitches in this and then we go to B and B is the cream so that's that's then the cream and then we're going to go back to needing uh, A which is um, the body color. And I happen to have a second little ball of A. So this is this ball of A right here is the one I'm actually working on right now with the head. So it's attached to my work. So I've got a second little ball of A here, and then I'm going to need a second little ball of B and of C. So this is B, this is C. So right now, before I actually start knitting, I'm going to um, take some of this off, uh, just roll it up and do it now. Uh, some people would could just use off of both ends of the yarn, and I've done that, perfect to do it. I've also had that fail on me if I run into a little bit of a knot. And so, and it can kind of really, this is going to get tangled a little bit at, from time to time when you're doing intarsia, but um, that's just part of it. So we're uh, just going to be patient and do a little bit at a time here. So this is probably enough, I'm thinking, because it's just for the eyes, around the eyes. So I'm going to be brave. And I'm going to cut that. So now this is my second ball of brown, which is C. And I need to do the same for the white. Uh, just trust me on this because with intarsia, we don't carry the yarn like if we were uh, doing Fair Isle, you have floats and you carry it across the back of your work. Well, for the face, and I've tried it uh, on one of my animals to see if I liked it and I didn't uh, like having all the floats back there. It just made the face too um, firm feeling. So I think it's best to do intarsia rather than doing strand work or what they also call fair isle. So we won't have any floats, we just start a new ball of yarn. So I'm gonna make this one a little bit bigger than I did the brown for the eyes in hopes that I don't have to, um, you know, add any <laughs> more yarn onto the starting any more new strands of yarn on the face. So just a few more here, because I really don't know how much of this I need for this. Okay, we're gonna say that's good. So now I'm all ready to actually start the face when I get to each one of those pieces. Get my tools all in order here. And everything straightened out so I give myself every <laughs> positive opportunity at possible. So looking back at our row 21, we're going to purl 14 
stitches. I think I solved my problem of staying in my camera. I hope it's working okay for all of you. I raised my camera up, which gives me a broader view. You know, I'm just not totally camera savvy, savvy yet, so obviously it's taken me a few videos to figure that out. But by raising my camera up higher, I think I've helped myself. So hopefully that's better. Okay, we're going to purl over 14 stitches. So we'll just do a few here and then stop and count. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Okay. Okay, we've just done our fourteen stitches and now we are ready to go to color C. And my color C is this brown. This is why I made this little cheat sheet for me so I can quickly tell which is C because when you're working with multiple strands of yarn colors it's so easy to pick up the wrong one. I know that from <laughs> from experience. So I'm going to knit two out of color C. I'm going to actually purl two I should say. So what do we do with our live yarn? Well, I want my live yarn, I'm gonna lay it just to the left. So I got through knitting with it right here and I'm gonna lay it right straight across my knitting right here. And I'm gonna start knitting with my next color and it's gonna catch right here at that, rather than just letting it hang down or flaw, fall over to the right, always get in the habit of just laying it to your left and between this row and the row coming back we will catch that so you won't have an a hole here where we ended off this um, knitting with it right here it will close up we want to make sure we catch this um, between this next yarn and my needle we will be catching that and it will also get caught when we secure this um, end piece uh, this end piece I should say uh, in tuck it in and weave it in so you just always want to be kind of aware with intarsia not to be afraid of but there's just a few things to think about so I'm gonna hang on to my new yarn just with my thumb on the right finger just securing it so I have a little tension and I'm going to knit two rows and if I wanted to make double sure that I've got that caught I can pick up the this lighter color brown and now pick up my darker color and I've just wove it in so now it the yarn I was just previously knitting with this lighter tan is up against the yarn the stitches whatever you want to call it and when I pick up this darker brown and start withing knitting with it it's going to get caught right there at that intersection just to secure it and it'll help close up that gap right here where one color left off and a new color began. So let's do our purl stitch. So that was our two purl out of the dark brown. So now I'm going to lay my brown uh, over here, lay it to the left. And now what color do we go to? It's color B and we're going to purl 12 stitches. Well, color B is the cream color. So now we're going to have some more <laughs> strands hanging down here. That's okay. Don't worry about them. They will get secured at the end. 
So once again, I'm going to take a hold of my right thumb, kind of pinch that together so I have a little tension on the yarn I'm going to start using. And this is purl 12 stitches. So let's get that first one purled. Okay, that's my first stitch. Tug that tension up just a little bit. And again, I'm going to take the yarn that I, the last yarn that I was just knitting with, not the lighter body color. We're just going to let it lay over there right now. And I'm going to make sure on this second stitch and only on the second stitch that this darker brown gets secured one stitch in. And I'm only doing it on the second stitch where we've actually added the new color. Hang with me. All of that's going to make sense when we get down a little further, a few more rows. So now we're still working on purling those 12 stitches. I'm just tugging up my tension. And now that dark brown color, I'm going to let it just dangle down. So the only yarn that we have up here is the one I'm knitting with, which is the light color. And we're purling 12 stitches. So there's two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, we'll peek over to the front and see we've got our colors going there. This white stitch looks like it's a little bit bigger, but it won't when we tuck that in and get the tension all snugged down like it's supposed to be. So that's the way it's supposed to look right there. So now after the 12 stitches in B, we now go back to A and we're going to purl eight. Well, our ale, <laughs> ale, our A is the pale brown. And the pale brown is right here. And I have a feeling, let me look at my pattern. I didn't read this through real well. Okay, I actually need three balls of this pale tan color. And I'm going to stop the video for a minute because I only have two out here and I've got to find a third one. Okay, now we take our third ball of uh, the body color, which is A, and we are going to purl eight stitches. So we, you can see where intarsia is uh, very um, <laughs> challenging when you have very many colors. So now we're going to purl our eight stitches. It's our eight stitches. Here's that white that we were just finished using. I'm going to catch it in my second stitch. I'd catch it normally in that first stitch, but because this is where we started a new uh, color, I don't have tension uh, on there to actually catch it. So I'm catching uh, in my second stitch, the white will get secured when I do the second stitch of that eight. And like I say, hang with me because all of this is might feel overwhelmed uh, for a moment, but don't. It's going to come. It's going to come together. Okay. So now I have two of the eight knitted, two in the lighter tan body color, and I need eight. So there's the eight. This is the middle of the forehead, right up up at the top of the forehead. That's those eight right there. And you can see we got the white caught in that second stitch right there. So it has a place to kind of close that gap up. And now after the eight out of color 
A, we go back to color B, and B is our cream tone. So I'm going to grab that extra little ball of white, and we're going to do the same thing, and on um, C now we are going to I make sure I've got this. We just did the eight. B, we're going to um, purl 12. Just take your time to read your pattern because this is where one could really make a mistake easily. So just to double check our color B, if I look at my little notes up here, my, my color B is the white. So that's the one I'm on, and B says to purl 12. So we're going to purl that first stitch. Okay, and here is, here is the color we were just knitting with. So I'm laying that straight across to the left. Here is my live uh, yarn that I just made my last stitch with and I'm going to make sure that the one I'm trying to anchor is between the needle and that yarn and you can see when I pick this up it catches that strand. So now I'm going to continue on knitting with the white and we're doing 12 stitches. So whatever you have to do to mark your yarn, uh, mark where you are in your pattern, uh, just to keep you on the straight and narrow, do. Um, you know, what works for me might not work for you, but figure out a system. So that's one, two, three, four, five, twelve. So that was the twelve out of B. And then it says go to C. Color C is this brown right here. And this is the skein that is actually attached to my work. So I have to pick up this other little one. And we are going to um, purl two. So again, we are going to attach a new, a new color again, or a new ball, same old color. Okay, we're going to purl two. That's one, and now this is where I want to, my last color that I was working with, I want to get it secured in the second stitch right here. Okay, kind of snug up my tension. So there's my two stitches um, out of color uh, C. And now we get to purl 14 out of A. And so once again, oh dear, Oh, here, <laughs> here's my third one. I was gonna say, where did I put that? It's right here. So, another strand. It's gonna be hanging down off of our work. And all of those ends are gonna get tucked in. So there's my first pearl. And this is the last color I was knitting with. So I wanna get that next stitch to secure that um, brown that we were just working with. Just looking at my work here. Purl a stitch. And I'm just going to tug on everything right here to make sure I've got my tensions uh, tight. And away we are going to purl to the end. Okay. Let's look at our work. Try not to be overwhelmed at all the yarn that you've got hanging on the backside. 
but we're all set up, got the face started, ready to do the next row. And the next row is a knit. Here we go. Now we are on row 22 and that's a knit row and we are going to knit 12. Don't worry about all of those strands hanging down in the back. We'll deal with each one when we come to it. 12. So that's my knit 12 out of A. And now we're going to go to C. And it's going to be a little more self-explanatory color-wise because it's going to be the next color uh, that's close by. And so my next color, which is C, I'm just going to show you, verify, this is C, that's my darker brown, and I'm going to pick C up. C is right here, and I want to secure in my knitting the yarn I just got through working with. So always keep that in mind. The yarn that you just got through working with is going to be the yarn that you need to secure in your next stitch. So here's my yarn that I need to secure. I'm going to lay it to the left again and now I'm going to pick up the yarn that I want to start knitting with and I'm just going to bring it up. Now I'm going to kind of forget about <laughs> the one I'm securing and I'm working now with my live yarn and I am going to uh, knit five stitches out of the color C. So here's one. And I just secured that last yarn in that first stitch that I just made. I'm not going to worry about any more securing of that color. It's just the first stitch when you transition from one color to the next you always want to secure that yarn. Otherwise, you will have uh, a hole where one row, where one color left off and the next one began. If you don't secure it, you're going to end up with a gap right there. So you just secure it in the very first next stitch. So there's my two, three, four, five and now I'm going to tug just a little tug on all of these ends sitting down here that I just got through knitting with on the previous row a little tug and see it just makes them all fit in there nicely I'm not over cinching them down I've got all of them caught uh, with the uh, in the back here by the stitch that's alongside of it. I don't know how else to explain that uh, other than you always need to secure that stitch. So now I'm getting ready. I've knitted five and the next um, is with color B and color B is the dark brown just double checking here no I said that wrong color B is the cream well of course it is because that's what's right here so I'm going to reach down and find what would be the live yarn the one that's closest <laughs> by and I'm wanting to make sure that the yarn we just got through knitting with is going to be between my needle and my live yarn because when I start knitting it will catch the yarn I just got through knitting with. So now we are out of the cream which is color B. I'm knitting 13 stitches. Okay, just snug up those from the row below if you see something loosening up just take a hold of the tail end and just give it a little snug all right that's my 13 stitches out of b and now we're going to pick up color a and color a is our pale 
brown and that's right what's here and when you pick that up you want to make sure you're getting the end that was last knitted with right here right by it and because uh you know it could be over here a couple of stitches or over here a couple of stitches you just have to a lot for you know it's going to go um, over a couple of stitches from the back side it's not straight up and down this yarn here that i picked up so you don't want to pull it too tight uh, to where you get a pucker from the row below so you just want to be aware of of the tension on this yarn as we begin to knit with it and that is a and now we are going to knit four stitches out of a one two three four so there's our four stitches out of a and now we go back to b and b is going to be our cream color so we look down here because we have cream colors all over we have some here here and here so we just need to make sure that we don't get an end piece but we get the live <laughs> yarn that ended the row below that's right close by that's the one we're going to pick up and knit with so you just kind of have to look behind your work and you know it's coming from over here see i just picked up the wrong one that's really good that i turned it and looked at it that's coming from the wrong place that's the cream off of this over here i want to pick up the cream from this section right here so you really have to look closely so that's why you lay your work back and really make sure that now i'm on my live cream from the section that's right here to the left so you just have to look closely the payoff will be great because the sloth face will be really really cute so now that is knit 13 stitches one two and we just passed over the tan color and i'm going to secure that tan in the cream so i'm just going to say lay that cream or tan color in between my needle and my live yarn so when i start knitting and i just one stitch is all i'm going to use to secure that with then from the row below it secures that stitch and so now we are knitting uh, 13 stitches out of the uh, cream now we are going to pick up the C color which is the brown and it's the brown over here to the left and yep the yarns all a mess back here don't pay any attention to it so now I'm picking up the brown that I'm going to start knitting with I'm making sure that the yarn I just got through knitting with is going to lay over here to the left alongside the needle when I pick up the dark brown on this next stitch that cream is going to get anchored between this stitch which was my last stitch and the new stitch that I make so now we are going to knit um, five stitches five and you I'm just going to show you so it's loosey-goosey see it's loose not a problem because we're just going to reach back here and we're going to get a hold of every one of these tails that are laying right here even down from the row below and we're going to push pull on those and just tighten up 
the tension on each one of those. So when I look at it, it all looks nice and even. The tension is what it's supposed to be. And as we do the next row coming back over, that's going to start locking those, all of those stitches in. So now we go back to our body color and we are now going to knit 12 stitches. So let's find our live tan body color, which is here. The last color we just got through knitting with is the dark brown. So I'm going to lay it to the left, then I'm going to pick up my body color and start knitting and it will catch that last color we were just working with and it will secure and close up that gap. Okay, that was row 22. Now we're going to go to row 23. I am purling 11 stitches. 10, 11. Now, one little oh duh thing to think about is you want to make sure that your yarns, your end yarns all stay over on the back this is your really your back side of the pearl side this is the front side of your work and you don't want to have any uh, tail end sticking out on this side the front side at all they are to be back here on the back side or the pearl side whatever you uh, want to call that so that is my 11 stitches i'm just going to double check one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. And now we are going to uh, do eight purl stitches out of this darker brown. So here again, this is the yarn I just got through knitting with. I'm going to lay it to the left. Now I'm going to pick up my next yarn that I'm going to knit with, which is right here and get a little slack here and as you see when i pick this up when i pick this up here's the yarn that i want to get caught on the first stitch just that first stitch so if you can get a good look here's my live yarn the yarn i just got through knitting with is between my live yarn and my needle or the stitches on my needle. So when I make that first stitch, it's going to get secured right in there. And we are purling eight stitches. It's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, very important to stop, go back to this intersection, snug up your tension to make sure that the last stitch of this other color, the one that we caught, is snugged up. Okay, now we've just entered into the next color over, and that color is uh, B, and we're going to purl 26 stitches in B. And here again, we are going, the color we just finished was the dark brown. So I'm going to take the dark brown, I'm going to lay it to the left and pick up the color I'm going to knit with, which now this is my live yarn. And when I start knitting, I'm going to be catching that yarn in this stitch right here. Now what you do want to be careful with, because it's coming from over here, because you know we're knitting kind of at an angle, right? We're, we're knitting here at an angle. So uh, you don't want to snug this too tight and pucker up your work. So here again, keep your um, 
knitting kind of stretched out on your uh, needle so it's not bunching up. And we are now going to purl that 26 stitches across. And that was the first one. 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. I'm going to stop and count for a second. I'm going to snug up some of these, the tension in some of these. One, two, three, four, five, six, twenty-six. Okay. I believe in double, double, double checking. <laughs> I'm going to count one more time. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. So that is our 26 out of the cream color. And now it says to purl eight. So we pick up our next color. We've got the white laying across. I can't stress that enough because you want to catch that yarn to bring that tension together. And so now we are purling eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's the eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. And now we are going to purl 11 out of the body color, just like we did before. Here's my yarn laying to the left. And now we're starting off with the next color, and we're going to purl that 11. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Okay, let's spread out our stitches, give everything a little tug. We're going to turn around and take a look at it and um, as we go back over across, our tension will all fall into place because we've kind of kept uh, ahead of it in that we've snugged it as we've gone across. We've secured each one of those color changes at the intersection and we have no openings. If you don't catch that stitch when you change colors, you will have an opening. So that's kind of a, a must <laughs> to pay attention to uh, as you're going across. That's really, uh, other than messing with all of this, <laughs> catching, uh, securing the next color, you don't want to do an extra twist around. You don't want to do that. Just lay it flat and it automatically gets caught in the next stitch. So I don't know of any other tricks and helps to tell you to do, but it looks like to me, when I turn this around, this is the forehead, this is the beginning of the eyes, the white where the transition is from the body to the white on the face. It looks like it's coming together like it's supposed to. So I'm gonna go off camera and finish knitting on the face and when we come to the next major change of some kind I will come back on if I feel like it's necessary um, 
but I think that that should be enough to help you with those color transitions. So happy knitting and uh, I'll come back on in when I get to the next step.